What spark was the source that made you writers? When did you know? I think you said you knew. Uh, oh, my, mine, mine early. was mine was. You know, I know exactly that moment, and and uh, and Louise. I know Louise knows the story. I, I was. Um, 11 years old and I discovered the work of Ray Bradbury and, uh, and I wrote him, you could only get four Bradbury titles in Australia at that point and I'd finished them all and I wrote him a letter from I live in a tiny country town called Gundagai um, where it had a population of about 400 people and I wrote a letter to Ray Bradbury, care of Random House, New York. I didn't put a stamp, from memory, I didn't even put a stamp on the envelope <laughs> and, uh, and three months passed and I came home from primary school and there on the kitchen table was a package wrapped in brown paper and containing the four Ray Bradbury titles that weren't available and a letter from the great man himself saying how thrilled he was to have a young reader on the far side of the world. And I think that, that was the generosity, I think. That was the moment I knew I, knew I wanted to be a writer. Um, and I just want to just add to the little bit that the postscript to that was that a few years ago uh, I wrote that story up for an American magazine and I called... I quoted Ray Bradbury. Ray Bradbury once said that Jules Verne was his literary father and Mary Shelley was his literary mother and Edgar Allan Poe was the bat-winged cousin they kept locked in the attic. <laughs> <laughs> and I said that Ray Bradbury was my literary father and that Steinbeck and Hemingway were my overachieving older brothers. And this story appeared in a magazine and was republished on the website and about a week later I got an email from Alexandra Bradbury who was Ray's youngest daughter. I had no idea he was still alive. And she sent me a message saying, my father is 91 years old and he's now completely blind. But I read him the story that you wrote and I wanted you to know that you made an old man cry. Oh. And he wanted you to know that you are his son. Oh, how oh. nice. Oh, that's yeah. lovely. That's, yeah. That is really, really beautiful. Yeah. You make us cry. Yeah. Louise, I, I think I read that you were writing when you were very young, but then you stopped in your teens. I think it's, I think it's something that a lot of people do you know you write a lot when you're little and I wrote I think I had a my peak my peak production period was when I was probably about 14 years old and I wrote lots and lots and lots and lots of poems do you still about have how, them I think my dad still has them yeah I, I wrote lots of poems about how shit it is to be 14 years old <laughs> and how nobody knows nobody has ever experienced this misery and dreadful but you know and then and then after that, I just went out dancing every night for about 15 years and just <laughs> <laughs> loved it. So I think there's a whole period of, uh, of my life that was predicated around nightclubs and dancing and having a really good time. And then round about the, towards the, my late 20s, I started to write again. And I wouldn't say that any of those nights were wasted, but it maybe would have been an idea just to practice my craft a little bit. <laughs> have you ever gone back and read any of it? That you wrote when you were 14? No, or is it all, is you think it'd no. be too self indulgent? I'd have to kill myself. <laughs> <laughs> no, I wouldn't, no.